This is a box filter, one of the old school air-based filtration methods used for a very long time before sponge filters became more popular. Let's talk about why they've been phased out. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're going to be talking about the humble old school box filter. Here is a brand new Penplax one. We'll bring it up nice and close. Pretty simple, right? Box, uplift tube. Now what you would normally do is take your lid off and pack this with a bunch of filter floss. Really simple. And then you have a very simple tube here. Your air goes in, comes down this way, moves up through the filtration and out either through the box itself or through this extra uplift tube. Depends on the amount of air you're pushing through the unit. Simple, right? So why would the old school people ditch these things? This sponge filter. Old filter box, sometimes called a breeder box, but that's not how we interpret breeder boxes nowadays because it is more common to see these in the fish rooms of big fish breeders. But the sponge is kind of the modern equivalent, and because it's so simplistic and you don't have to keep repacking it, that's one of the reasons why this is phased out. So number one, why is this phased out? Why does it suck? You kind of have to keep filling it with media, whereas a sponge filter like this is basically reusable for nigh eternity. These will last for a very, very long time, and not necessarily this one, right? There's, I could give you the old, the old Jim Colby special here. <laughs> there's there's a lot of different variations of a sponge filter, but we're just, this is a prop, okay? And there's a lot of different versions of the box filter. There's ones that are round, there's ones that are bigger, there's smaller, there's kind of new age versions. But before I get to like the new age version and why they've tried to fix some of the problems, let's start there. When we're using something like filter floss and we're literally pulling it out when it's dirty and putting new filter floss in, what are we doing? we're resetting the bacterial colony in the primary filtration unit. It's just there to act as mechanical filtration. And while that's fine, unlike our sponge filter, when we go to clean the sponge filter out, we can keep all of that nice, healthy, beneficial bacteria here in the sponge. When we take out all the filtration, the breeding ground, if you will, for all that beneficial bacteria, that colony now has to reset which it doesn't have to do with the sponge filter. That's one of the biggest reasons why this has gone away. Now, another reason. This is kind of simple to fix, but sponge filters at a base have a nice weighted base to them. You'll notice no weights, it's simple plastic. These would often float, which would leave a lot of your people using these to have to figure their own ballast out over time. Frankly put, if you weren't paying attention to the instructions, maybe you're newer, or whatever, and you're trying this thing out, you might not realize that right away, and then you've got to read, disassemble it. This is a very small, small thing, but it's just the convenience of having something that has a really solid base that is nicely weighted, so it's not as likely to move around. These can move around. Less likely to happen on gravel, <laughs> let's be honest, or some kind of substrate, but often when we're using these, because they have little legs, they're designed to sit on a bare bottom tank. Bare bottom tanks, not as popular unless you're kind of at a larger scale, like breeding style setup in your fish room, which is where these were the most popular. Again, like a sponge filter, and we talked about those cons in a previous video, this sticks out like a sore thumb in your tank. So if you're trying to go for that, that super clean looking aesthetic where you don't see very much, ooh, ah. Having this ugly box full of filter floss in it, kind of hard to hide and sticks out. Even with this cute little green lid trying to cover it, you still got a bunch of white filter floss sitting in here. And as it gets dirty, well, it looks dirty. Now, granted, that's a good visual cue, but still, this sticks out like a sore thumb. It's not as aesthetically pleasing. So for people who are going toward more aquascape tanks or prettier planted tanks, there are just better options for hiding the in-tank filtration unit, or maybe just better overall in-tank filtration units. That comes to our next thing. As we started getting powered filtration, the amount of water that this little guy is moving because it's air powered gets significantly outclassed by things like power heads and your hang on back filters, your canister filters, even your in-tank filtration units. 
really, really outclass this little guy. So what you typically would only see is this used in very small tanks, which it can be very effective in, but there's a combination of cons that really made it so that the sponge filter took over Grandpa's old box filter, right? Now, let's talk about some of the kind of newer versions and why they still suck too. Here's a more modern box filter. And you can see it's preloaded with a bunch of gravel to act as a biomedia and a couple layers of sponge to help be our mechanical filtration. There are some problems with this because if you look at the difference in comparison, right, the box filter here has some slits along here, but it's mostly trying to pull water in through here using the air down through the filter floss and back out, right? Some will escape through the top a little bit, but most of it is going to follow that path. We're trying to do the same thing here. You can see as we get this close, like there's our slits. So water's coming in here. It's going through these two layers of sponge and then ejecting out of this little tube with its jet to help kind of propel certain direction to kind of increase flow, right? It's creating a narrower nozzle here in order to make that flow more effective. Improvement, yes. But similar to the original filter, it still sticks out like a sore thumb. I mean, this thing's designed to prop into a corner, but one of the problems you typically have is a lot of your fish, I have some of these in some Pleco tanks, easily knock this thing around and slide it all over the place. Whereas the much heavier weighted base of a sponge, even with this rock in here, this is significantly more likely to sit in place. This will still slide a little. Can be a problem. I know you're like, Bentley, you, it's ticky tacky, but these are little things as to why this phased out. The biggest reason really comes down to the convenience of this singular unit and the massive beneficial bacteria surface area that is presented in a sponge. And while we have sponge and some media in here, it's not a significant enough upgrade in this little guy to consider really over a sponge. Now, one of the benefits you do have is that when you go to clean this out, you can remove the whole box and it can keep some of the dirt and stuff contained. But unfortunately, what happens is you pull this out and because there's only the exit up here, right? All of that muck gets down into this media where you're now going to have to wash this entire tray of media out. It can be a little bit bare because it's not the simplest thing known to man. You could lose some of your media. Now, granted, it's all replaceable. You could replace this with crushed coral if you need a buffer. And now your crushed coral is hidden away, right? There's some benefits that are in this little system, but it is still a cheap, hard plastic thing that can get broken. It's not as durable as the plastics that are used in like hang on the back filters like this AquaClear over here, or even better, some of the titles that I have over that way. They're small things, but really what it comes down to is basically this is the more efficient version of this. And even if this is the big upgrade to this, it still has minimal benefit when compared to some of the other air power filtration things, whether that's something like a Madden filter, which is like the turbocharged version of a sponge, we'll get to those soon, or something like a gravel filtration unit where you basically never have to maintenance the thing, it just does all the work for you, right? These you do have to maintenance, they will get clogged up full of muck and eventually need to be cleaned. And in the case of these, their, their maintenance is extremely fast. Pull out all of your filter floss, put new filter floss in, done, <laughs> right? But when you're doing that, you're resetting your bacterial colony where at least here, you are maintaining that bacterial colony. But now this takes as much, if not more time to service than our good friend, the humble sponge filter. So it stops losing some of its massive benefit, that speed here, in order to try and simulate the amount of surface area and benefits that come in a sponge filter. That's part of the thing that sucks about it is that really in order to evolve this, now there are still people that believe in these filters wholeheartedly, do not get me wrong. And they have their purposes. They do heavy amounts of water changes. Maybe they have an auto drip system, something like that. And this is really just there to be a mechanical thing to pick up that detritus. Okay. And it's probably a major pro we're gonna put in one of the pro videos, let's be honest. But is that why you want this thing? 
when you can look at significantly more useful filtration units, whether that is something like the on a gravel filtration or a sponge or a matten filter, do you really want this little box when you can do some other things that are probably way more efficient and give you other significant benefits? Nope. That's why Grandpa's old little box filter has kind of uh, gone the way of the dodo. No, granted, they're still out there. You can buy these super cheap on Amazon. But they're still blah. They're just meh. There is better. That's what I got for you. The basics are really come down to this. You're if you're using this version, which is the most efficient when it comes to maintenance, you're losing your bacterial colony every time you clean it out. It works as really good mechanical filtration. That's nice. This version is basically trying too hard to be a sponge. And it loses some of the massive benefits of sponge in that while it has some extra surface area here, it's nowhere near one of these. That's it. In the end, these bad boys kind of got phased out by either the even older school, under gravel filtration, or looking at something like a sponge filter or a Madden filter. But what I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below is, have you ever used one of these types of filters? You got Grandpa's old Pen Plax box filter? Or are you using this kind of newer, uh, cheap Chinese thing? <laughs> I want to know if you've ever used one, if you've ever considered one. Maybe you are the wizened fish breeder of times of yore, and you're like, Bentley, you have no clue what you're talking about. I've got 800 of these things from back in 1962. They are perfect. I'm sure they're, they're better than this one, because, you know, modern stuff, we keep getting cheaper and less durable. Ain't that a biscuit. Anyway. If you have used one of these, or maybe you're just like, I never even considered this because why wouldn't I just use a sponge? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it. Maybe you got a friend who's considering ye old box filter. They saw it, like, I found a super cheap filter on Amazon, man, and I'm going to do it. Maybe send them this video and I might talk them out of it into something slightly nicer. <laughs> As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.